YouTube, it's Tone. I'm back with another one for you. And so this one, uh, I think is some really crucial information to know. It has to do, it's, it's called common law um, abatement. And uh, the purpose of this uh, process is to basically nip the shit in the bud before it gets out of um, out of hand, right? So what it's doing is addressing a lot of the clerical errors, which are convenient clerical errors, right? That they use in order to fucking defraud you out of your God-given rights and then uh, get you to enter into their jurisdiction by arguing a fictional, uh, a fictional charge in, in a fictional realm. And it's fucking bananas. So... Essentially what you want to do and what this is going to put you in a uh, position to do is to clarify exactly what it is that they're talking about, who they're talking about, and why they're talking about it, right? Uh, and this is on a level of common law because it's before you even enter into the jurisdiction to argue their fake bullshit. You're addressing a lot of the, um, you know, the, the fraud, the fraudulent elements that they use in order to trick people into fucking contracting with them. So this book is called The Dong Quixote School of Law common law abatement so we'll get into this and i'm gonna just run through a few pages a day of this shit until until it's done because i know none of you are gonna read this shit but it's shit that you should know all right so here we go comments from the professor on traffic citations and introduction to abatement there are many that believe that special appearances by paperwork, motions, etc. nullify a court jurisdiction under the emergency power this is false doctrine uh, there is no remedy in challenging a court jurisdiction except by abating its process first. Abatements are not a challenge to the court's jurisdiction, merely a good faith attempt to correct errors in process, clear up the errors, judge, and I'll appear. Right, and so, it's okay. So special appearances fail when a judge knows what he is doing. Under a martial rule, judges do whatever they want. Whenever they want, so long as they, uh, so long as he or she does not alarm the public or disturb the peace, jurisdiction is always granted to try jurisdictional questions. Even if one goes to higher courts, defendants grant jurisdiction without knowing it because they never because <laughs> they never challenge the process that creates the jurisdiction in the first place. And so that's the thing. Um, you can freaking appeal it if it's on it if it's uh because of technical errors that they made and shit like that but those all have to be addressed at the time of the fact not after you granted them jurisdiction regardless of the fact that you didn't know what the fuck was even going on but you still unwittingly uh entered into their uh contract with them so you always need to you know grab this shit first before it even gets out of um you know out of hand so so frcp clause 2.424 process is perfected by appearance special or otherwise also remember the court is uh is not the building the judge or anyone else it is the paperwork if the court paperwork is defective there is no court and it ceases to to exist the only way to overcome the war powers process is by abatement and you know that the court is on it's basically only only papers every time you walk in there it's motherfuckers walking around with papers and shit motherfuckers looking for papers and holding them and it's all that without the paperwork what the fuck would it even be what would they be to talk about right on top of the fact that they always want to talk about shit like they were even there to, to fucking begin with. You know what I mean? So, traffic traffic tickets are a pain for all of us. When using this abatement strategy, first send in the notice of abatement, memorandum of law, and denial of corporate existence. Which I have videos to, as a matter of fact. If you guys want to scroll down and check those out. Uh, different forms of affidavits. Denial of corporate existence and all that shit's beautiful in court. Because that's all that, because that's the realm that they operate in. So when you go there with a uh, affidavit that they have to fucking rebut, which is referring to the commercial uh, aspect of the whole nature of the court, you know, they, you're putting them in a position to fucking say that they either are a corporation or they're not, because they can only really deal with corporations to fucking begin with. Once that's filed into the record, if they decide to move forward, which they probably won't, if they fucking decide to, then they're going to have to fucking address that, right? And then, and then you have it on court, public access to it and all that. So do they really want that smoke? Probably not. That generally takes care of the annoying ticket. If you do not want to hear from him within 15 days, send in the default notice of the notary to the clerk. If you receive a summons, which has the proper signature of the judge in the court seal, send in the subpoena and discovery uh, interrogatories and prosecuting attorneys and the court. You're challenging jurisdiction and the opposing party must traverse your challenge or the court cannot proceed. 
In most cases, they will never give you the documents you have requested or your answers or your questions. If they do, you won, right? Because they can't really say anything about it. You're putting them in, in, into a position to where if they answer, they're going to have to admit to committing a crime, right? It's chess. Think about it. So the people granted authority to the state legislature to adjudicate only a few mat uh, matters. Actions at law, actions in equity, and actions under the rule of necessity or uh, military admiralty was uh, remanded to the federal government and to and the states and supposed to have no authority to legislate in this jurisdiction, which they don't. Because, I mean, all of these courts are under the uh, legislation and um, legislators and all that, right? So, and they've only ever been give, uh, granted authority to regulate commerce. So these courts cannot have more power than the than the uh, institution that granted them the uh, power, right? So, like, you can't have more water in your glass than the pitcher that poured it in there. This is not possible. So there was a time when someone aggrieved of harm would file a tort at law. Moreover, the nature of the action governed the rules of the procedure. If there was a breach of contract, then this was an equity matter. Uh, and that's why I thought it was good to have your contract in place because that's what these people are, right? Uh, and a lot of people think that you don't have to do anything. You can just be private and all that. Yeah, well, that makes sense if you fucking plan on living under a, a fucking rock or like a cave or some shit like that. But the odds of you coming into contact with one of these corporate dickheads who doesn't even know that they're a fucking corporate dickhead. Imagine that conversation, right? So you're better off just having... <laughs> how's that contract? I mean, how's that conversation going to go on the side of the fucking road, right? With a dude who's fucking brainwashed and don't even know that he's a corporation. Come on. And she didn't go nowhere. So you want to have, so you want to have your contract in place with these, with these people. So that way, if something happens, then you know who to hold fucking accountable because you already fucking put them on notice, and they still want to play stupid ass games, right? So then you tax them. And so if the agreed party could um, allege a tort, a tortoise breach of contract, this matter was moved from the equity side of the court into the law side. This is because the people must have access to a remedy at law, right? So. They bring the problem, they have to bring the fucking solution. They can't just be like, oh, hey, look, uh, we got a fucking big problem over here, but the only solution is we got to fucking throw you in jail for the rest of your fucking life and shit like that, and we can't really give you an opportunity to do anything else. Yeah, what the fuck is that about, bro? What the fuck is that about? For that, why even have a conversation and just, and just skip that and start throwing motherfuckers in holes and shit, right? Fucking retards, bro. So anyway, if this type of action could give relief, if one were in... <laughs> If one were in the military or if one were under territory under martial law, the court was a military court. If there was a breach of the international contract, the matter was federal and heard under admiralty. The state legislature cannot vest the court with authority it has not been delegated to, and that's what I was just saying, to it by the people via the constitution of the state, right? And so these people have only ever been granted authority to regulate commerce. That's as far as their fucking jurisdiction goes. So they cannot create a new nature of action out of thin air. Later on, when the constitution of the several states were amended and uh, recognized to administrate corporations, a separate court was established and the action was in the nature of the administrative. They're fucking administrative scam artists. That's what you're dealing with. But they're not going to tell you that because they make a lot of fucking money off your ignorance. So they're not going to tell you that, but I'll tell you that. But I'll tell you that. So live people could not... Live people could not be brought into administrative courts as the as the only matter at issue was the breach of corporate charter by an artificial person, right? Which is your all capital letter name. That's where you're going there to speak on fucking on behalf of your all capital letter name as the authorized representative. Nothing more. You're not fucking claiming to be a surety either. If if somebody else in that room wants to be the surety, then they fucking can, but it doesn't have to be you. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. So somewhere along the line, the announcement and the complaint of the nature of action was lost. The attorneys all together and decided that it would be much simpler for them if there were only one form of action. So today there is no disclosure of the nature of the action unless one demands to know the nature and cause of the action by accusing a demand for a bill of particulars. So you want the fucking, you want the original charging instrument handed to you. And you go look at my video, the A4V process with the fucking red stamp and all that shit using your fucking exemption and stamp that motherfucker and send it back to the goddamn sender, bro. The end of the fucking story. You know what I'm saying? These people are fucking ridiculous. So I have been quite successful in the procedure, even in the states that have decided a demand for particulars in a discretionary motion before the court. 
for example, Pennsylvania, that demand for a bill of particulars used uh, before arraignment so that one had an opportunity to raise a meaningful defense against the elements of the personal uh, jurisdiction and venue to include ter uh, territorial jurisdiction as well as the nature of the action that that used to be a part of the subject matter jurisdiction which they always which they used to talk about prior to to moving forward now they try to just breeze past it like it's not a fucking like it's not a big thing i mean they're making a killing on the fact that nobody's questioning them or fucking asking them the right fucking questions so within the past couple decades they moved it into a discovery which is held after your fucking arraignment why the fuck what we're going to talk about what you guys have on me after I agree to fucking enter into your bullshit. Now, why don't we talk about that right now, nigga? Right now. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, the ability of one to challenge the jurisdiction and venue of the court was lost. And it is because after you fucking agree to another court day and shit like that, man, fuck that. Deal with that settlement closure on that fucking day. See you the fuck later. You know what I'm saying? If not, then you present them with your fee schedule and let them know how much it's going to cost to move forward. If they want to go to another court date, they should have your check right the fuck there ready to sign. You know what I'm saying? You have no obligation to entertain these people for free. You don't. So this is because entering a plea accepts the jurisdiction. In this way, only subject matter jurisdiction was challengeable. If they say that this is a matter of law, my defense against this jurisdiction is whether there is a live damaged party, right? I do not ask. If this is an equity jurisdiction, because equity is not criminal, is not a criminal type of action, and it's not. So everybody's been getting thrown in jail for fucking civil matters, which don't even have a criminal fucking jurisdiction. If you ever saw somebody that had a fucking warrant and shit like that from a, from a fucking civil court, they can't even fucking arrest them because it's a civil matter. Even in civil court, they can't fucking arrest you if you have a warrant. But these fucking assholes want to throw people in the back of the cruiser and then throw them in jail because of a civil matter. That sounds like kidnapping to me. Sounds a lot like kidnapping to me. I wonder how they would feel if they got thrown in a fucking trunk or some shit like that. I wonder how they would like that. So if they say this is a matter of hustings, which is the true nature of action of all administrative law, my defense against this jurisdiction is that I am not an artificial person, unless I am a federal citizen, but that is quite another matter entirely, unless they can show from the records in the Secretary of State's office that I have it charted as such. If they say that this is an, ad, an admiralty matter, my defense against this jurisdiction is whether the offense was committed on federal territory or which the state has retained concurrent jurisdiction. Although I have not found how the state exercises an admiralty jurisdiction in light of 28 United States Code Clause 1333, if they say that this is a military matter, my defense against the jurisdiction is that I am not a member of the military. I am, however, a member of the militia of one of the several states, but they do not operate as such anymore. The nation is not under martial law, or is it? Given the fact that there is currently 14 notices from the president of a declaration of national emergency published in the Federal Register, we may very well be in a state of martial law. The one from March 6th, AD 1933 is still in effect today. And so, however, they're not going to admit the nature of the action because this will admit that their want of jurisdiction on the record for all to see. So they move to dismiss the charges every fucking time. Right? Because if they want to be technical, if we're, if we're at a time of war and they're just in military court, there is no fucking law. All that there is is corporate fucking policy and shit like that. And that's why you need to know what fucking UCC is because these people are businesses parading as government and you can shut them the fuck down with the Uniform Commercial Code. Simple. It's all contract law. Shit is all commercial. So, and, I, and, and so that's the power of knowing this information is that they can't, they can't fucking tell you shit anymore. The fuck they gonna tell you? You know what I mean? So, it is a game of chess. Stop playing checkers. That's what I got for you for now. Until we meet again.